Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our free Thursday webinar. I'm Nikki Javakik from Lookup Strata and I'm also the Managing Director of Tower Body Corporate and I'm your host again today. Today we're speaking about tendering for a new strata manager. As you know, the efficient and effective management of your strata community is crucial to its success. The choice of a strata manager can significantly impact the quality of life for all residents. Megan Parkins from Tender Advisory will be guiding us through the process of conducting a formal tender to select the best strata manager for your New South Wales building. A formal tender process offers numerous benefits. It can help you secure competitive pricing, establish long-term relationships with the strata manager and ensure you receive a high quality service. During this webinar, you'll learn key considerations when evaluating strata management proposals, including service quality, risk mitigation, and alignment with your scheme's needs. We'll also discuss how a transparent tender process can enhance accountability and promote fairness. Megan will also discuss how an independent consultant can provide objective guidance, streamline the tender process, and reduce the workload for volunteer committee members. Today's session is a New South Wales webinar, and while some content may apply to schemes located outside of New South Wales, we do draw your attention to the fact that legislation differs in all states. So please refer to your state's legislation and seek advice from professionals servicing your area. And before we begin, I'd like to mention that the information in this session, including the discussions arising from submitted questions and chat conversations, is not advice and should not be relied upon as advice, and you should seek independent advice before acting on the information contained in the session. Megan Parkins, Director of Tender Advisory, is a licensed strata manager with a proven track record of excellence. Recognised for her dedication to the industry and clients, she has received multiple awards, including the 2019 SCA New South Wales Rising Star Award and the 2020 SCA Australasian Rising Star Award. With a strong foundation in strata management, Megan recently co-founded Tender Advisory to help owners' corporations regain confidence and control over their trust accounts and the management of their properties. Now, as we take our transparency responsibilities very seriously regarding partnerships, Tender Advisory is a sponsor and a contributor to Look Up Strata. Welcome, Megan, and thanks so much for joining us today. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today. It's so nice to see so many of you on the call this morning. Um, as Nikki touched on, I did operate as a strata manager in New South Wales for seven years. Prior to that, I worked in the commercial and residential construction industry for five years. And the combination of all of that experience led me to gain a clear understanding of the importance of a formal tender process when appointing any service provider, not just a strata manager or a facilities manager. Um, and also throughout my time in strata, it uh, provided insight into a gap in the education for owners corporations of that of the importance of a formal tender process. As Nikki touched on, I co-founded Tender Advisory with my business partner, Ben Riddell, because we both wanted to increase transparency and consistent ethical practices throughout the strata industry. It's an introductory page to myself, um, and then we move on to the first slide. So why choosing the right strata manager matters? So maintaining asset value, a professional and competent strata manager will guide their committees to be proactive in their repair and maintenance duties, ensuring the building is in the best condition possible. An apartment or townhouse that is within a well-maintained complex will naturally gather more interest and with greater demand, the value of the asset will reach its potential. During my time as a strata manager, I have taken over schemes that were very poorly maintained and some comments from real estate agents were that when they take um, potential owners throughout the building, for example, the car park, which hasn't been maintained properly or with bylaws unenforced, this deterred people from purchasing within the building. Fostering harmonious communities, a good strata manager will encourage engagement within the community, keeping them informed of the ongoing issues around the building and encouraging committees to have regular formal meetings so that owners may attend and if permitted to do so, address the meeting. When owners are not kept in the loop, tensions can rise, which creates a negative sentiment within the building. On the other hand, Part of being a good strata manager is the ability to mediate situations and inevitably create a more harmonious community. Rather than let an issue simmer and continue to worsen, a competent strata manager will attempt to mediate where possible and seek resolution between those involved. Financial management and budgeting. 
Ensuring the owners are guided to adequately budget for the yearly expenses will mitigate against the likelihood of large one-off expenses and clear, frequent and transparent financial reporting will also ensure owners understand where their money is being spent. Legal and regulatory compliance. The regulations surrounding strata are ever growing and it is the role of a strata manager to help their owners navigate these complex laws. Failure to do so can have serious consequences. For example, failure to submit an annual fire safety statement incurs a pecuniary penalty of at least $1,000 with City of Sydney Council. So the risks of not performing due diligence. Neglect of maintenance. So if a building is not maintained correctly, this can create cause for delayed repairs and decreased property values. Legal and compliance issues. So as I'm sure we're all aware, there was an increase in the number of um, reports to the tribunal during, especially during the COVID uh, period and people are getting more savvy and more likely to submit complaints. So this can create undue disharmony within the community. And if it's not managed correctly, it can end up costing the owner's corporation even more money. Uh, lack of experience. So ineffective ineffectiveness in day-to-day -day operations, maintenance or conflict resolution. If you do not have a competent and experienced strata manager, Again, this can create delays in the management of your owner's corporation and can cost the owner's corporation more money. Poor communication. Communication is everything in this today's day and age, whether it's electronic or in-person. Lack of transparent communication can create um, misunderstandings and mistrust and, again, create disharmony. Financial mismanagement. A risk of hiring a manager with a history of financial errors or misappropriation of funds. Realistically, your money is going into a large pot that is legally required to be managed by the strata manager. However, an incompetent or inexperienced strata manager can spend your money frivolously and incorrect budgeting can result in increased chances of special levies. Reputational damage. So if your building has a poor reputation or a poor history in its documentation, in its schemes, books and records, when conducting a strata search, this will be a deterrent for new owners and will decrease your pro property value. The benefit of conducting a tender, so promoting transparency and accountability, building a requirement for your strata manager to be completely transparent with your owner's corporation and be accountable for every dollar spent and every action taken within your owner's corporation can increase confidence within your owner's corporation and also increase the value of your property. Mitigating risk. So as we touched on earlier, an owner's corporation has many legislative requirements that they are, they are to meet annually and on an ad hoc basis. A competent strata manager will mitigate the risks that come with these legislative requirements and will probably maintain the compliance of your building. Ensuring competitive pricing. So if by approaching the market with a structured request for tender, and going to multiple competitors with the same uh, experience level, you can ensure that competitive pricing will be provided. So if you, for example, if you go to your existing strata manager or just one more strata manager, they don't have the urgency to provide competitive pricing as they would if they know that it is a competitive tender being undertaken. Enhancing service quality. So if you approach uh, the incorrect strata manager or perhaps you don't have the inside knowledge that uh, someone within the industry may have, you might not realise that that particular strata manager has a poor history of service quality. So whether it be by communication, maintenance of your building or, you know, building relationships with contractors, for example. Another benefit of a tender is building long-term relationships. If both parties enter into a con contractual arrangement with a detailed understanding of what is expected from both, then this can enhance the quality of the long-term relationship. So your strata manager should be your friend. They should not be your enemy. You should be able to work cohesively with your strata manager rather than fighting them for information or them to take action. And then of course, identifying the right fit. As I touched on earlier, um, the ability to identify the right fit, you might know what you want, but you might know how to not know how to check that that is what your strata manager can offer you. That's where a little bit of industry experience comes in. The benefits of a tender, so increasing confidence amongst owners. I'm sure many people who are watching this uh, video or on this call right now have been to an annual general meeting or a strata committee meeting where it has reached the point of contention. It's everybody's building and everybody's money and sometimes sharing things isn't 
the easiest thing to do. So if you have a strata manager who is being transparent, open and providing um, detailed updates to your owners corporation, this can aid the strata committee in their ability to lead the broader owners corporation through the year. Effective management. So as we've touched on earlier, a strata manager wears many hats and they have many duties. So if one of the balls that they're juggling drops, then the, this is felt amongst the entire owner's corporation. So say, for example, it's a delay in window and maintenance repair that creates a leak into a common property area. This then creates a safety hazard of slipping and it also deteriorates your asset value. So an effective strata manager will jump on that straight, straight away and they will arrange the necessary repairs. Reputation of the strata scheme and an asset value. As we've, as we've touched on broadly within this call, the asset value of your building is reliant on many things. It's not necessarily just the way the building is maintained, but it's the way the building is recorded in your schemes, registered documentation and books and records. For example, if you have a strata manager who arranges a general meeting for the resolution of a bylaw, a bylaw has a maximum time period of being six months to register. If for whatever reason your strata manager doesn't register that bylaw, another meeting has to be called and the bylaw has to be re-registered. These sorts of things in, your, in the documentation history of your building looks like poor management and poor maintenance. And again, is a deterrent for your building for a potential buyer. The tendering process is step-by-step -step guide. So undertaking a detailed tender, again, this is a, a guide for the way an end-to-end -end tender should work. Obviously this may vary from building to building depending on preference. So the preparation phase is incredibly important. It's understanding the requirements and the preferences of not just the strata committee, but the broader owners corporation, what your building needs and who your building needs. So the detail of management can vary very greatly between from building to building. Some people want someone who just sits behind their desk, undertakes regulatory compliance, has the annual meetings and the formal meetings that they need and ticks the box. But a lot of owners are now requiring the more personal approach from their strata manager. They want someone they can call when they have a problem. They want someone that they don't have to call when there's a problem because they've already received an update. The preparation of the RFT is also a crucial stage in the tender process. This is understanding the requirements of your building. So it's not just your personal preference because you share your building with the rest of the owner's corporation. So a detailed process must be undertaken to make sure that every single item within your owner's corporation is covered off in that RFT. Analyzing and shortlist. This is a very difficult thing to do. So at what we do at Tender Advisory is we optimize a weighting metric system. We use that system to initially prepare the RFT and then evaluate the responses which come back from each tendering company. For example, if you, the Strata Committee creator to take a recommendation to the owners corporation and can't, can't prove that this meets the requirements that were initially brought forward by the owners corporation, how can they possibly back up that recommendation? So the analysis and the shortlist process is crucial. Interviewing and evaluating. Now, this isn't necessarily important to every owner's corporation, but we are seeing that this is becoming very more common um, with the recent events in the strata industry. An interview takes away the desktop approach from a tender actually meeting a representative uh, from an escalation point within the company, as well as your proposed strata manager can make all the difference in the tender process. Face-to-face -face meeting in that interview, meeting that person and understanding their values, their management style and their ethics can create a lot more comfort within the strata committee and the owners corporation. And then of course, the appointment and review. So as everyone is aware, a strata manager can only be appointed at a general meeting. And then we always recommend a review period. So for example, you sign a maximum term, so a three-year agreement with a new strata management company. We would recommend that you implement a 12-month review process so that you can make sure that all of those promises they made at the beginning of the tender process are being kept throughout the management. Um, common pitfalls and how to avoid them. So inadequate due diligence, for example, reference checks. So obviously Google reviews, you know, they can vary. You might get an angry tenant. You might get an angry owner. They can be very jaded and very one-sided. We recommend reference checks within our tender process. For example, we would recommend one from an existing building, a long-term building with a five to 10 year, perhaps management with the Shider Management Company, as well as a building they've just lost. 
So we all we want to hear from both sides, the people that want to keep that strata management company and the people that have recently terminated them. What that, that does is that gives you a much broader opinion from the similar demographic to as, you, as the owners corporation who are tendering so that you can understand all sides of the story. Proper vetting is also important. So license checking of the strata management company, checking their registrations with the overarching governing bodies and also checking the, the history of their management. Choosing based on price alone. So what the strata industry is seeing at the moment is a lot of undercutting. So larger organisations with a more fluid management style. So initially you may come into the services of a very adequate strata manager and then after a year, maybe two years of management, shifting down to someone with a little bit less experience, which admittedly would likely be being overseen by a more senior strata manager, but it's still not the same day-to-day -day person. So we uh, oper we undertake checks on things like uh, portfolio size, uh, staff turnover, and again, company history. So price alone, the cheapest option is not always the best option. And then, of course, overlooking the finer details. As I'm sure we've all seen in the media, phantom fees are a, a commonality within New South Wales strata. So an owner's corporation might enter into an agreement that has a fixed term management fee. However, they may overlook the additional fees which are chargeable to the strata management company. We recommend a very detailed review of that contract to make sure that we understand exactly what the owner's corporation is walking into before they appoint the manager. Um, the role of a strata consultant. So obviously a strata consultant acts as a completely unbiased and independent third party to the process. They have no ties to the strata management company or the owner's co corporation, only as their client. And the client should be the only beneficiary of the strata manager's, the strata consultant services. So for example, the taking of commissions from tendering companies and the use of panels is something that we recommend avoiding because you're not receiving an unbiased opinion from your consultant. There's also the benefit of industry experience. So if you have someone who has their finger on the pulse of the strata industry, then they can see the, the, what's going on amongst strata managers and they can help you avoid potentially undisclosed and negative impacts from a tendering company. Customised solutions. So as we ran through with the importance of the preparation stage and the RFT stage, every specification should be unique to the owner's corporation. There will, of course, be commonalities because strata is a legislated service. So there are duties that every strata manager should undertake. However, every owner's corporation has different needs. Time and effort savings. So strata committees are volunteers at the end of the day. They're appointed by the owner's corporation who entrust them with the management of their, of their building for that annual period. However, they're not being paid. So if a strata committee is spending up to 20 hours a week as you know, the direct liaison between a strata management company for a tendering process, then that's all unpaid service. So what you see is a loss of motivation. So a strata, an independent strata consultant will stay motivated because you are at the end of the day, their primary client. Improved contract terms. So the insight that would be able to be provided by a, a consultant would be a lot more in depth than a strata, man strata committee member who has only ever seen their contract and maybe the contract of a friend who has a similar service from a strata management company. We see all things come through. We see everything from an unbiased opinion. We can help you navigate the detailed contract terms of the standard SCA agreement and enhance on that to better benefit your owner's corporation. And we also see increased accountability. So if a strata management company for, has knows that there is somebody overseeing that tender process, they're less likely to try and sneak things into either the proposal or the contract terms because there's that second set of eyes, that the experienced set of eyes running over that and they know that it's going to go to the analysis stage before appointment. If anyone has any questions, please reach out via the details listed on the screen. I think as we move forward with all of the things that are happening with um, pricing and with insurance commissions, lots of different strata management firms are looking at different offers and different ways to present their offers to their audience. And so I'd imagine if you've got somebody that's um, familiar with lots of different contracts and the way that pricing is arranged on contracts, 
it would be beneficial to have someone that can do a clear comparison between different contracts and um, and advise the the committees on what's actually being offered so that they're aware that it's not just on that base fee uh, it's also on lots of other cost factors as well yeah so the the pricing structure is definitely something that we can assist you in navigating at tender advisory or any other consultant could do we're not lawyers so we can't provide you obviously legal advice on the contract terms but Navigating those, the pricing structure is one of the most difficult things about um, strata management agreements because they are very complicated. A strata manager acts as a pivotal role within your owner's corporation and they wear a lot of different hats. So the way that we approach it at Tender Advisory is we detail the RFT, we detail the specification so that all of those costs are, are listed up front and um, very transparent from the onset. What are the key criteria to use when assessing the proposals outside of price? Yeah, so uh, the, what we implement at Tender Advisory is we use a weighting metric system. So we, at the beginning of the relationship we have with the client, the owner's corporation or the committee of, of another strata title property, we provide a detailed questionnaire which lists things like um, preferences in relation to staff turnover. So whether or not, I'm sure many of you have gone into a relationship with a strata management company, you've had a fantastic strata manager, and then all of a sudden, one or two years into the relationship, you've flipped over to someone with a little bit less experience. Um, we use things like staff turnover, locality, uh, portfolio size for the individual manager, whether or not they have other buildings within the same area so they understand navigating your local council. Things uh, and smaller things which get a little bit less attention like social contribution, so whether or not they use local trades and services, whether or not um, they in implement environmentally friendly processes, whether or not they can maintain an appropriate software system. So technology is becoming much more frequently implemented within Strata and every other industry in Australia. So whether or not they're up to date, these are all things that we use to guide us in the weighted metrics process. It's not only about finding the right strata management agency, but also about assign being assigned to the right strata manager. As an owner in a small four lot strata complex in Sydney, we know the fees we pay to the strata management agency are much less than those paid by larger strata complexes. The competence of strata managers range, ranges from very competent to not very helpful. After a competent strata manager about 10 years ago, our subsequent managers all seem to fall into the not very helpful category. So once we choose a strata management agency, how do we maximise our chance of being assigned a competent strata manager who is the right fit for our small scheme? So that's a really good question. And it's also a difficult one to answer. Obviously, strata management is a business. If And as the client, the um, person who submitted that question had touched on, they do pay less than probably a larger um, building. A strata management company will always put a lot of effort into maintaining those higher, higher contracts, especially if it is a larger organisation. So what we would do, say, for example, if you came to tender advisory, is we'd go through that metrics weighting um, system, that process, and we would maybe guide you to a smaller agency with a smaller portfolio that can put more effort into um, the care for a smaller building. So it's about that personality and the portfolio fit with the client. If you do go to a larger conglomerate, there is a chance you will fall through the cracks and, for, as you said, fall to a more inexperienced manager, probably um, a trainee manager uh, as a, a learning process rather than an experience one. But these are all things that we would you would cover in the first instance in that initial conversation with the agency. And some agencies do uh, see the benefit of, of really highlighting those smaller lots and uh, having a professional strata manager look after those lots and, and they might specialise in that area as well. During the contract period, a large firm has taken over our strata management company. Are we free to seek another management company or are we bound by the original contract? So again, we're not lawyers, um, but so we can't give legal advice. However, the contract, the standard contract from the SCA in New South Wales contains a minimum notice period for the for a company to take over the company that you 
previously contracted with, if they didn't provide you with that minimum notice, I would recommend seeking legal advice on the terms of your contract as they may have breached that. So again, without seeing the contract in detail and knowing a little bit more about the situa situation, it's, it's difficult to give an exact answer, but I would say there would be uh, grounds for you to question moving to a new agency. Mm, okay. Astrana manager's contract was three years. The contract expired over six months ago. Where do we stand? The Strana manager had, uh, has asked us to backdate the contract. Is this legal? And the fees on the new contract are over and above the standard fee, including high out-of-hours payments and additional fees. How can these rates be monitored? Are we able to negotiate with the Strana manager? Uh, first off, no, it is not legal to backdate a contract. Again, while we're not lawyers, that's definitely not a legal process to be implemented, to be requested by your strata manager. And yes, you would definitely have grounds for negotiation. I would say, again, without seeing the contract and without giving legal advice, I would say that they are scampering to try and keep the business and that if you approached it from a very formal perspective, then they would be open to negotiation to those fees. But again, whether or not you're currently in contract with that strata manager is another question. So they may not even have rights to convene a meeting to appoint that contract. Mm, okay. And I think sometimes, based on questions that we receive into the site, uh, committees aren't aware of the power that they actually have and that they're the consumer and they're actually the ones that are in power of the choice. And so they should exercise that power when they're dealing with their strata manager. Do you agree with that, Megan? Absolutely. Yeah. Owners, corporations and committees have no idea the power that they have in this current market. And I think, again, that's why Ben and I um, started the business when we did, because we saw that gap in education. We also have uh, a chat bot on our website for not, not so much to do, to do with our service, but for FAQs and they or the chat what is linked to all of the legislative um, websites, the fair trading website, and all of the strata information services. So if you if you put these questions into that chat bot, you will receive the answer. Our strata manager receives insurance commissions. Is that a warning sign of unprofessional strata management? No, it is not necessarily a red flag for poor services. I mean, the value of the commission if it exceeds a reasonable percentage over your premium would be a red flag, but the receipt of commissions from it, from the insurance industry has been very common practice in strata for many years. It's completely legal um, as long as it's done correctly and it's disclosed correctly under the current legislation. Whether or not that's being manipulated in your, in your specific circumstances is another question. And without knowing that, I couldn't tell you, but uh, no, it's not necessarily an immediate red flag. And as we mentioned before, more and more companies are looking at different offers and some are choosing to go uh, commission-free, others are staying with the commissions, but they're making sure that they're very transparent about that, those commissions as well. So I guess it comes down, as you said, to that uh, particular strata management company. And if you were offering a tender, would you have a, a, a process that would uh, transparently show exactly how those fees are collected and, and what they're for? Yeah, we have a full disclosure requirement within our tenders. We also have a, um, a requirement for any company who is tendering to provide both an internal organisational chart and an external subsidiary or head company, head parent company organisational chart. So you can see how they're connected to anybody else in the industry. Okay, I think that's a really important point at this point in time with uh, with all of the news stories that are coming out at the moment too, Megan. So thanks for bringing that up. Now, we've spoken about strata management uh, tenders mainly, but you were mentioning that you also do tenders for other contractors as well. Um, can you give us an outline of how that works? Yeah, we do. So we do building and facilities management tenders as well. Obviously, they're linked services and they should rightfully complement each other. But I'm sure as many people on the call know that they don't. If it's not your building manager's fault, it's your strata manager's fault. So what we, we do is try and we try and mend that gap by finding the right fit. But yeah, so we, we operate in both sides. So building and facilities management and strata. There is a lot of confusion in amongst owners corporation on who does what. So whose responsibility is it? We've generated a table on our website and a blog, which which outlines the different roles between the two service mm. providers. Is it possible for the OC to have a say in which individual manager they have? Not necessarily. So your your contract is with the agency. Obviously, um, a strata manager, strata management company worth its salt would want to continue that positive relationship. So an open commu open conversation in relation to which manager you want should help. 
but realistically uh, something like a key person clause which some people may have seen under New South Wales law they they don't they don't hold so you can request it but it, it, it is at the discretion of the strata management company who they put as your individual manager okay fair enough Will you talk about what's best practice around the roles, responsibilities and accountabilities of a good strata manager? And I guess that comes down to your uh, tender document as well and what you're looking at. Yeah, so best practice obviously is in line with legislation and current compliance as a standard. Um, But the best practice for an individual strata manager for a site would rely on the needs for that site. So we had a question earlier from a four lot scheme. The needs of a four lot scheme would be very different to a 250 lot scheme or a multi-tiered property with a BMC, a community association or whatever else is in the mix. So best practices is a difficult one to touch on on such a broad demographic. Realistically, as long as your strata manager is staying up to date with the, with the movement within the industry, so they're, con- they're continuing their professional development, which they are all required to do as a part of the license- licensing process. They're maintaining your building, having your annual general meeting once a year. They're op- the communication is flowing to the strata committee um, and hopefully to the owner's corporation, depending on their instructions. That really is the best practice that you can ob- expect. Okay, wonderful. And what is the after sales service, I guess, Megan, that you provide if you've provided a strata manager to a committee? Can they can that committee come back to you if they have concerns later on down the track? Absolutely. So we stay completely available to the committee that we've worked with. Um, depending on the scenario, <clears throat> uh, we would generally recommend a three and then a 12 month review on any contract, of, no matter what the contract term is, because you need to make sure that that relationship is continuing. As I touched on earlier, sometimes you'll sign a three year agreement, you'll have a fantastic strata manager, and then all of a sudden, halfway through, you flick down to somebody who has a little bit less experience. Unfortunately, due to it's in New South Wales, especially due to the way that the strata industry is growing, more and more strata title builders are popping up. It will eventually be the most common means of housing in New South Wales. The requirement for strata managers is growing a lot faster than the industry can keep up with. So that's why we continue those touch points throughout our clients, even after the tender has completed. What role does the current strata manager play in the tender process? So at Tender Advisory, we operate on a completely transparent model. So the incumbent strata manager, your current strata manager, will be kept abreast once the strata committee have uh, appointed and confirmed that they are okay to be informed. They will also, as a standard, be invited to participate in the tender process. So... What we see is, and it's not necessarily that you you need to change strata managers. Sometimes your current strata manager just needs a message from the owners corporation or the committee that they do have power, that they know their rights, and the strata manager needs to pull their socks up and start attending to your needs. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great point. How do you choose the companies that you're offering up for tender? Yeah, so um, as I touched on earlier, we have a detailed metrics weighting system. Once we have the responses from the committee, um, usually for a smaller organisation, we would ask that a representative be appointed, but it must be a communal vote. Uh, We drop that into a database that we have generated on New South Wales strata, strata managers, and it submits, it produces the recommendations from the system. So it's a completely unbiased process. It's not just our friends from the industry from when we worked there. It's the match that comes out of our system for the answers that you give us, for the needs that you tell us, for the the importance that you put on the qualities of a strata manager. What time frame ahead of existing strata management's contract end date would you suggest engaging a strata consultant with a view to conduct a tender process, which I think is a really good question as well. Yeah, so the whole, our process is streamlined. Um, So the whole process takes around four to six weeks from our initial engagement to recommendation of a strata management company. So excluding the time it takes to call a general meeting, which is approximately, I think it's 21 days at the moment within New New South Wales, it's about a four to six week process. So you really want to start 
the process about two and a half to three months before the expiry, which um, everyone should remember your current strata manager is required to give you notice of in New South Wales as it approaches. Okay, wonderful. We've just been asked about the commission or fee for the strata managers for recommendations and how that works. Yeah, so we operate on an entirely fee-for-service model. We do not take a commission from any strata, building or facilities management company. We do this because we see a conflict in receiving a commission from a strata or from a tendering company. We don't know how um, we could possibly operate independently if we had a tender panel. So our tenders are, as I said, we, it goes into the system. It provides a recommendation based on everyone in the market. We, it's not a closed tender process. We don't take any money from the tendering companies. We only operate on behalf of the client. Excellent. All right. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks for the transparency there. Thank you very much, Megan, for joining us today. It was great to explore uh, tender uh, advisory and the tendering process for New South Wales. And yeah, I'm sure we'll have you back at a session in the future. Thank you so much, Nikki. And thank you everyone for coming today and your questions. As Nikki said, please feel free to reach out via email or on our website, and I'd be happy to assist where I can. If you gained value from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for information about parking, strata insurance, defects and more, head over to lookupstrata.com.au or sign up to our free weekly newsletter via the link in the description box below.